whistle sounds like from underwater. We're gonna find out. I guess we are. I wonder what we sound like underwater. <laughs> so why is the camera underwater? What does that have to do with the steam engine? Well, that's the whole point of this video. So I have had a desire to see the inside of the firebox while the engine's running for a long time. And it feels like the impossible task because fire hot. Well, that might uh, lead you down the road of why the camera's underwater, huh? Well, we'll get there and I'll take you kind of down the road of how I got to that point. I had originally tried shovel cam on the locomotives while actually running with the camera mounted on the scoop, which was gonna be really cool because you get to see what the coal does as you throw it in. But unfortunately, the coal fire burning at like 2,000 or 2,500 degrees um, overheats electronics very quickly, even when they're, you know, 18 inches away or whatever. <laughs> so the, the camera, you'd get like a couple good scoops in and then the camera would overheat. And I'm still going to try that again in winter once the ambient temperature is a lot colder. Uh, I figure it might work a little bit better, but remains to be seen. But so the first thing that I decided to try doing was as suggested by our curator, Jeff Taylor, was suggesting that I use a, he suggested that I use a colored face shield. Oops. Normally used for oxyacetylene torch cutting. And you normally see through it, it blocks out lots of the bright light. And that should theoretically give a really good view of the firebox. <laughs> Unfortunately, the melting point of plastic is very low, uh, and even being six inches away meant that, you know, even after like 20 seconds, the, uh, the plastic melted. And as I said, should have seen that coming. Oops. So then I had the realization that the GoPro cameras that I use for filming are waterproof. It takes a lot to get water to boil, right? So if I could get a like a glass fish tank or something, have the camera in it, I could hold it there at the door long enough such that the water wouldn't boil over and it wouldn't melt the glass because the water would be cooling it and the camera wouldn't overheat because I'd be cooling the camera with the water as well. And that turned out to work. I still wanna see if there's a better way that I can rig it up with maybe a different camera or maybe a modified GoPro or lens or something so that I can mount it rigidly to the door so that you can see through one of the peepholes so that you can still watch what the shovel does as it does it and everything um, and watch the fire while, with the door entirely closed as that's a little bit more thermodynamically efficient than what we ended up doing. Uh, but we made sure we had a nice fire and enough fire right in front of the door so that I could crack the door just enough to get the camera right up close in the fish tank and capture some footage. And it turned out awesome. It gets what's inside it. Thank you. 
And then I realized that, okay, well, the GoPro doesn't have a lot of slow-mo, but it would be cool to see the slow-mo it does have. So I recorded some stuff in 8x slow-mo. And that stuff turned out amazing. This is some of my favorite footage of locomotives that I've captured so far. Watching the fire do what it does, and you could... And you see it in that slow motion. You can see each power stroke and each exhaust from the engine. It's awesome. So here's the first slow-mo shot. And I love as the door opens. It's just absolutely brighter than hell in there before the camera can adjust to understanding that it's being subjected to this fire. And then you can see each power stroke and you can see huge flames all the way throughout the firebox. It just looks absolutely incredible. But one of my favorite things you can really catch in the super slow-mo is you can watch the cinders and the hot pieces of coal get pulled up through the fire. You can see those little black dots. That is little pieces of coal that is either still burning or has burnt or whatever. But Unfortunately for me, the camera was low on battery, and though it said it had, you know, something like 30% battery life left, 8x slow-mo eats it pretty quick, and it shut off pretty early. But it was a blessing in disguise, because I was able to get out a second battery, and I was able to run it again later in the loop on the railroad. And I got to see the change in fire, because the fire had been trussed up, and was a pretty full huge fire you can see that there's huge flames everywhere in, in this first shot but in the second shot you can tell right where the firemen hit exactly in their last couple scoops and where it had burned down a little bit more so now here we are in the second shot the fire on the left side, primarily in that back left corner, was the last stuff that the firemen hit. You can see how tall those flames still are. But the rest of the coal isn't burning as efficiently and doesn't have as much mass behind it that still wants to burn. And so you see a lot less flame across the rest of the fire bed. And this is okay because we're not using that much steam running around the railroad and all the holes are plugged. So we're not drawing any cold air in. So this is actually kind of the ideal way that you fire at the railroad museum versus somewhere where you've got a real long run to go down. Thankfully, the camera let me film for a long time. This is after the engineer shut off, and look at how much taller and more loose the flames are. What's happening to me is that because there's not the forced draft, there's only just the air moving over the stack causing some amount of vacuum and draft through as the engine drifts, you don't see those forced quick bursts of flame. You see a lot more tall, lingering, slowly burning away flames as the volatile gases burn away, rather than quickly burning them and quickly burning them completely when the engine's under a heavy load like it was working earlier. And now you can see this is even later. The engine's been shut down for longer and we're going downhill and we're running a little bit slower now. And so there's less draft over the stack and you can see that the, the temperature of the fire has come down a little bit by the change in color. And then here we are almost in station. We're braking coming into our stop and you can see that the whole fire is now just those dancing, licking, big, tall flames that are just kind of lazily burning rather than being any huge fire or, or anything like that when there was a huge draft. Now there's hardly any air moving over the stacks, so there's hardly any air drawing that vacuum through the fire. And so you just get this lazy kind of open convection rather than a forced convection. And you can see it right here across the whole firebox. This is the stuff that I is just it's so entrancing to watch.
anyways, guys, I hope you liked this first little look at the fire actually under the road. I'm excited to try and get some more context for these while firing and seeing if there's a couple other ways that I can utilize some trickery and, and some of the footage to learn a little bit more about how the engines burn and how they do under load. So if you'd like to see any more of that stuff, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching.